But if I come along as a three-dimensional being, I can pick her up and put her in the other one. And from her point of view, a miracle's taken place. She has no capacity to imagine a third dimension. She only knows two dimensions. Got the picture? So you got an insight. What other insights might we get? Well, first of all, they, I, I can put my finger one millionth of an inch away from each of them, no matter where they are. My proximity to them is totally independent of the distance between them. Why? Because I have another dimensionality. Wow. So we're getting some insights here, perhaps, huh? If I, as a three-dimensional being, poke my finger through their two-dimensional universe, what do they see? A dot that becomes a circle and then it disappears, right? Putting it another way, if a ball passes through, what is it? It's a dot, becomes a circle. In other words, they only perceive that which is discernible within their own dimensionality. Now, let's now shift to a three-dimensional world. We're a group of disciples in an upper room. The room has a floor, a ceiling, and four walls. It's a six-sided figure, right? Floor, ceiling, four walls. All the doors and windows are locked. And we get a visitor who shows up. Well, he's a spirit. No, he isn't. He challenges that. Handle me and see. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bones as you see me have. So he's tangible, palpable. And yet, he can enter and leave a six-sided space without penetrating any of the six sides. See, he's hyperdimensional. Now, see, we, need, we do well to get a little bit of perspective of what we call reality. And I'll represent us by the Vitruvian man of uh, da Vinci, just idiomatically here. And I want to talk about size. Larger than us or smaller than us? Larger going to the right, smaller going to the left here, okay? In terms of largeness... We discovered there's, an elusive, there's a concept of mathematics that we cannot find physically. That's infinity. On the large size, we discover that in the sense of largeness, the universe is finite. The great discovery of 20th century science is that our, from astronomy and physics, so forth, that our universe is not infinite. It's very big and may be expanding, but it's finite. That's staggering its implication. That's why it had a beginning. And that gives rise to the conjectures called Big Bang Theories and what have you. Okay, that is something we can sort of deal with. Let's go the other way. Let's talk, let's talk about smallness. If we go to smallness here, that's the field of quantum physics, subatomic particles. And we discover something very disturbing, that there's a limit to smallness, that length, mass, energy, and time are made up of indivisible units called quanta. If you split one of those, it loses locality. It's suddenly everywhere at one time. What's that mean? Let's talk a little bit about that. You've all seen the little model of an atom in your, in your books. You have a nucleus and you have an electron spinning. That's one way to represent it, of course. We call it a nucleus and we have an electron. Take the simplest atom we know, a hydrogen atom. Right? We're together so far. This is obviously not the scale. We know that the atom is about 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Point zero 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 eight zeros, you know, one centimeter. Nucleus is even much, much uh, smaller than that. The ratio of the atom to its nucleus, if I put the other way around, is that the nucleus is one part in 10 to the fifth. What does all that mean? Well, if you want to make a model of this and you make, use a golf ball for the nucleus, the electron will be three miles away. So if you're going to build one of these in your garage, you better, you got a problem, okay? Just a model of it. The point I want you to get across is that the ratio of the, the size of the golf ball to the total is one part in 100,000. Are we together so far? Just broad terms here? Okay. But that ratio is a linear relationship, right? To get an area, you have to square it. To get a volume, you have to cube it. So the volumetric ratio of this atom is 10 to the 5th cubed, or saying it another way, 10 to the 15th. Let me point out that that ratio is the same ratio as one second has to 30 million years. We're dealing, that's why scientists use these exponential, that's a way of representing very large numbers. 
the ratio of the nucleus to the atom is the same ratio as one second has to 30 million years. What does that mean? I have a, pl a podius up here. You say, that's solid, okay? And I say, this is solid. And Gary says, no, it isn't. It doesn't even exist there. Is it, is it, it's all empty space. He is more correct than I am by the same ratio. It's more like empty space than it is solid by a ratio of one second to 30 million years. It's empty. It's an illusion. In fact, it's an electrical simulation. Really. So, let's, go, let's talk about this another way. If I take a, a, a line, I can cut that in half, right? No problem. I can take the half of that and I can cut it in half, right? Now, you would think I could do that forever. Take the half and, and, and so forth. Go smaller and smaller. You think I could do that at least conceptually forever. No, it turns out I can't. When I get down to 10 to the minus 33 centimeters and attempt to cut that in half, it loses a property called by physicists locality. We now discover and have proven in the laboratory that every photon in the universe knows exactly what every other photon is exhibiting. They're linked in a strange way. And that's, that, lead, that leads to this, uh, th th they lose locality. There's a Planck length of 33 centimeters, a Planck time and 10 to the minus 43 seconds. I think that's what a twinkle of an eye is, by the way. Not a blink, a twinkle. Anyway, uh, it's the speed of light going through that small... Anyway, so if we take this thing, what we've said, on the large size, we know we have finite, finiteness. On the small size, we have finiteness. In other words, there's nothing infinitely small and nothing infinitely large. We're, we find ourselves in a reality that is simulated. It isn't a real reality. And uh, at the, now, if you, uh, we are in a digital simulation. And that discovery is very disturbing. In the Scientific American, in June of 2005, they had an article which concludes that our universe is but a shadow of a larger reality. That's their words, not mine. But that's exactly what the Bible has been saying all along. Now, a photograph is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. If I give you a picture of Gary, you'll recognize him in the picture, but it's still a representation, a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. You say, well, I can get a hologram. That's like a window in the, into a three-dimensional space. Well, we're getting somewhere here. In holography, we take a piece of photograph, we illuminate the photograph with a laser, and we take a reference beam and reflect it off that and record the way those two beams interfere. And what we gain on that thing is a is the collection of the interference patterns of the direct light and the reflected light. And when you look at it in, in regular light, it looks like a darkroom mistake. It's a foggy piece of film. When you illuminate it with a laser that created it, it becomes a window, a three-dimensional. It's actually a Fourier transform of that image. And it's like a window through space, and depending what you, which way you look at it, you're looking into a three-dimensional space. But even that, even a hologram, is a, th a representation of a three-dimensional space. But now let's go, having all that palaver behind you, let's take a look at 1 John 3, 2, one more time carefully. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He, who's that He? Jesus, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. How do we know that? Before, because we will see him as he is. Now, we don't know how many dimensions Jesus enjoys right now. We know that it's more than 11, because that's the only way he could mathematically get in and out of a six-sided sphere. That's just a property that he, appear, he has at least that, maybe much more. But here's the point. Whatever he enjoys, we will be like him. Why? Because we're going to see him as he is. We're not going to see a three-dimensional representation of a four-dimensional object. We're not going to see a ten-dimensional representation of an eleven-dimensional object. No. Whatever, whatever we're, he enjoys, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to apparently enjoy the same dimensionality. Wow is right. And that's... Uh, what uh, Paul says in uh, Romans, the redemption of our body. 